to continue our discussion on properties of equality in section 2.2, we are going to be covering multiplication and division properties of equality. So instead of adding and subtracting from both sides, we're going to be multiplying and dividing from both sides. So we have a few examples to go over. Again, the concept is the same. Whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you do to the other. The purpose of that is to solve for the variable, figure out what that variable equals to make that equation true. So to start with, we have 7p equals 63. So when we look at 7p, what operation is being performed between the two? 7 times p, so that would be multiplication. So just like if you were adding 15, you would do the opposite. You're going to subtract 15 from both sides. In this case, we're going to do the same thing, only instead of adding, we're multiplying. So instead of multiplying by 7, we are going to divide by 7. So how do we divide by 7? We just turn that into a fraction with 7 on the bottom. And 7 divided by 7 equals 1. So remember, our identity property for multiplication and division is 1. So anything divided by 1 equals itself, and anything multiplied by 1 equals itself. So that's why it's the identity property. So our goal is to get this p to multiply by 1 so that the p is essentially by itself. So 7 over 7 equals 1, and p times 1 equals p. So whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we do to the other. We can say that these 7s are going to cancel out on the left. And then we would have p equals 63 divided by 7 is 9. So p equals 9 in this case. On our next one, we have 24 times x equals 0. So again, because we're multiplying the 24 and the x, we're going to divide. So whatever we're multiplying that variable by, we're going to go ahead and divide by that same thing. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. So 24 divided by 24 would just cancel out, equaling 1. And then we have 0 times 24. So remember our 0 properties. 0 divided by anything equals 0. So in this case, we would have x equals 0 divided by 24 is just 0. Now, our multiplication property of equality is a little bit trickier, so that's why it's introduced at the very last. Out of the four properties of equality, we learn multiplication last because it's a little bit trickier. So bear with me as I go over this, and hopefully I'll try to simplify it and make, make it a little bit easier to understand. So when we look at this one, we have z divided by 2. So z divided by 2 equals um, 54, and we want to know what z equals. So if we're dividing the variable by 2, the opposite of division is multiplication. So we need to do the opposite operation. So what I like to do is just kind of put this whole thing in parentheses, and then we're going to multiply by 2. You can make it a big 2 or a little 2, but I kind of like to put it up top because we know if we have a fraction, if we have um, 4 over 5 divided by 10 over 4, we know that we can cross cancel. So those fours would cancel out. So the same is true with these fractions up here. These twos will cancel out, leaving this z by itself because two divided by two, again, just equals one. So what I'm going to do is put this side in parentheses. So whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm putting this side in parentheses and then multiplying it by two. So because I divided in the original equation, in order to get the z by itself, I have to do the opposite operation. The opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm multiplying by 2 on both sides. So this would give me z equals, and then 54 times 2 is going to be 108. So z equals 108. Another way you can write this, okay? Let me go ahead and get a different color here. Another way that you can write this is have 1 half z equals 54. So if you wanted to write it like that, you could, because this is what we see down here. So basically, there's a 1 up here, a 1 times a z. And if you wanted to pull that fraction out front, you can do that and just have 1 half z equals 54. And that's the same thing. So we're going to see how to work through a problem like that in this last one. So 3 fifths R equals 75. 
So how do we do this? Well, when we look at this R, it's being multiplied by the three and it's being divided by the five. So both operations are being performed, which means we have to perform both operations in the opposite, okay? So how do we do that? How do we write that out? Well, we're gonna do the same thing. Put this side in parentheses, but instead of, if we look at this, this R is being multiplied by three, so we're gonna divide it by three by putting the three on the bottom. And right now this R is being divided by the five, so we wanna multiply it by the five. So what do you see? Well, in order to get these to cancel out, we have to take the reciprocal. So remember the reciprocal is when we flip a fraction, we put the top on the bottom and the bottom on the top, we just flip it, and that's taking the reciprocal. So when we take the reciprocal, of a fraction that's a coefficient, what's gonna happen? Well, if you're multiplying this, five times three is gonna equal 15, and then three times five is gonna equal 15. And what happens? 15 divided by 15 equals one. So we've achieved that identity property because r times one just equals r. And that's what we wanna do. So anytime you see a fraction that's being multiplied by a variable, Remember, just take the coefficient. So these are gonna cancel out, the fives will cancel out with each other, the threes will cancel out with each other. But what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So this is where it might be a little bit tricky. So we multiply by a five thirds, which means we have to multiply by a five thirds on the other side. So when we're, when we're dealing with fractions, just remember, you can turn that whole number into a fraction just by putting a one underneath of it. And multiplying fractions is the easiest operation to do with fractions. All you do is multiply across the top and then multiply across the bottom. And if you can simplify at the end, then you do it. So just remember, you don't have to worry about finding a common bottom. You don't have to worry about flipping anything. You just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. So what is that gonna equal? Well, 75 times five, 150 is gonna be 375. And one times three is just three. So 375 divided by three, we can reduce that. And that's gonna leave us with R equals 125 when you simplify that. So hopefully that helps gives you, give you an understanding of how we use the multiplication and division properties of equality.